Seconded by Ms. Yeah, are we going to discuss this? Well, yeah, then we can discuss. It's been seconded by Mr. Gallagher. Discussion. Sure. <laughs> $23,380. Uh, why are we using PSA Dewberry? Just we went through a selection process, uh, recruitment and selection process for architects in anticipation at that time of building the police station. They're fully familiar with our operations. Throughout that process, both staff and a subcommittee of the city council on that time, uh, members of a citizen group uh, <coughs> combined made a recommendation to the council that if and when we build a full police station that we hire this group. So this group's knowledgeable of the police department's needs. And so they were selected and hired a couple years ago to we never We never hired them. They were, they were selected as the architect to go to contract should you build a police station. Okay, so do we, have we paid them any money yet for anything? We paid them about, I'm going to say, five or six thousand um, dollars. To be selected? No, no, no. No. Um, if just kidding on that, it's just a... If you recall, um, again, during the time of the Citizen Committee participation in terms of deciding the size of the building, they, they facilitated a discussion leading to a recommendation to build a building to the size it was recommended at that time. I think it was 56,000 square feet and some other recommendations to you. They facilitated that discussion to bring that recommendation to you. Uh, as you know, though, that, that decision was uh, halted because of financing issues. Correct. So for right now, we've got 6,000 in. Uh, with the most recent drawings that they've provided to uh, Rick Monis, have we paid anything for these new drawings where they've drawn up <laughs> sketches of what they want this telecommunications room to look like? No. Is there a billable amount for what they've already drawn up right now, do you think? They haven't billed us. My, my big thing is that, you know, we've paid them some money right now. We know that we're going to move this room literally one room over. We know the room's going to overheat given the amount of personnel that are inside there right now in telecommunications, and that's why we have to go to the larger space. We have new equipment. We want, they need more space, obviously, because they're on top of each other as they work in there right now. Correct, Chief? Right, so we're in a bigger space. So I look at this as we're not putting an addition on our house. We're just changing around some duct work. We're moving from one room. We're moving one room over, right? So if I wanted to put three new computers down in my basement, and I want to move from one room over, I'd have to pull a bunch of wiring. You, and you're shaking your head saying, no, it's, it's not at all like this. It's not simple. Extremely technical equipment. It's radio equipment, right? It's, it's not as simple as that. Um, <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd welcome you to walk, uh, I'd welcome you to walk down in that radio room, pull the wired channel runs off of that equipment and figure it out. Um, you know, you've got radio people involved, you've got heating and air conditioning people involved, you've got uh, computer people in involved, um, you know, PSA uh, is, a, is one of many architect firms that uh, work on police facilities and, and are familiar with the issues of, of police facilities. I, for one, don't want to risk uh, somebody that puts uh, home computers in their basement for a living. I don't want to risk turning the emergency dispatch center of this city over to them and saying, plug her in. I understand. Well yeah. warranted, right? But also, th isn't there a consideration, too, that there was a former architect that did a bunch of work when we were going to put the wing on to the south here when we considered that with a $3 million addition when we were going to simply give this particular building over to the police and then add on for admin and have a new city council chambers to the south. And there was a proposal of $3 million that then got stopped. And there was an architect there, I believe, called Wold and Associates right. that had probably an extremely working knowledge, a uh, very good working knowledge of exactly how this building works right now. And there was Williams. And we've we've done through three architects, and we still don't have anything solved. Well, you have a half million dollars worth of equipment that needs to be installed, and what's, what I find is pressing is that we wait until the last minute to try to get these things slammed through before you get... Because you have all of a sudden this... I didn't wait on. until last I, minute. I know, I know, I know. I'm just simply saying, though, but we have to have this in by December 31st, otherwise you lose the grant, correct? That's, that's, no, that's it's, correct. Later, it's later in the spring, but our worry is that... Our worry is that if we wait and there's a hiccup in the process, 
you know, we don't have time to recover. That we don't have time to recover. Can't we find a, a less expensive architect or someone to draw this stuff up for us? When you go for RFPs, you look at both price and quality and uh, uh, skills to do the type of job. To answer your question, uh, as I understand the grant, the project has to be completed and bills paid by spring. Working backwards from that time, if we were to stop this and solicit RFPs from other architects, probably 30-day advertising period, the fact that you only have one meeting in December, you probably have an RFP selection process. This, this discussion that's on the agenda tonight in front of you, say the beginning of January. They then design the project during February and March. We bring a bid to you to do the actual construction work <coughs> in April and then actually construction in May and June. Now that gets you right at that deadline with no tolerance whatsoever in case, as the chief said, a hiccup in the process to recover. Hence our recommendation. We have experience with PSA Dewberry. We went through a selection process. <coughs> they were deemed qualified. The price is reasonable given what we anticipate to be the construction cost. They're within the 15 to 20 percent range of what we anticipate to be the construction cost of this project. We can get things done and underway and do so within a reasonable amount of time to allow us to recover in case there's some unforeseen circumstances that might arise during the construction and remodeling process. If, if, if I'm just doing my math correctly, $24,000 to move one room over, right? I mean, I can only imagine what it would cost to have them design an entire building if it's $24,000 per room to move these things around. I mean, this is, I just, I just find the number to be staggering, truthfully, to move one room over. Yep. You, you, this is one of the things that I've been concerned about as long as I've been here, and I don't disagree with you, I don't but the cost of... Of, of doing things before you can even put a brick down is, is outrageous. And, and I, 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 the general but I don't know what other choice we have. They're not the general contractor. Well, right? what's they a, just what's drop everything and then they I, go, okay, what now I, I, what I think design. What I think is, is a shame, <laughs> what I think is a shame, gentlemen, is that, you know what, after this 24000 we still have a space needs problem yeah. in this building. Tom. Thank you, and that's really where I was going uh, as to